Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be deep diving into one of the most beloved yet divisive game franchises of all time right now, The Legend of Zelda. Why is there such a 50-50 split in the fan base? Stick around as we break it all down, and we'll also touch on based on what I call the Neil Druckmann effect. The Legend of Zelda burst into the screen in 1986, revolutionizing the action-adventure genre. With this open-world exploration, challenging puzzles, and epic story, it quickly became a favorite among gamers. Over the years, we've seen numerous entries in the series, each introducing a new mechanic, story, and characters. From the classic Link to the Past, to the groundbreaking Ocarina of Time, and the innovative Breath of the Wild, the series has continuously evolved. But with evolution comes change, and not all fans are embracing the change in the same way. One of the primary reasons for the split is the difference in gameplay styles. Classic Zelda games like Ocarina of Time and A Link to the Past focus heavily on structured dungeon crawling, intricate puzzles, and a linear narrative. Then there comes Breath of the Wild, which flipped the script with its open world design, allowing players to explore freely with minimal guidance. Some fans adore this newfound freedom with the emphasis on exploration and survival, while others miss the traditional dungeon structure and narrative pacing. Art style is another major factor, Wind Waker being one of my personal favorite entries that my parents personally took it upon themselves to call the Wind Breaker, took a more cell shaded cartoonish graphics that were a stark contrast to the darker, more realistic visuals of Twilight Princess. Breath of the Wild took a middle ground with a more painterly aesthetic. While the diversity in the art styles has split opinions, with some fans preferring the classic or darker tones and others embracing the more vibrant and stylized looks. Storytelling has also varied greatly. Earlier titles had simpler narratives focused on saving Princess Zelda and defeating Ganon, while later titles like Skyward Sword delved deeper into lore and character development. While Breath of the Wild took a different approach, offering a more fragmented story told throughout environmental storytelling and memories. While some fans appreciate the subtlety and depth, others miss the more structured and character-driven narratives of past games. Here we go! Look at my boy! Oh my god! Oh no, oh no, oh no, my god. Okay, Link? Oh I'm so easy. <laughs> it's so easy to get me. <laughs> Even the innovation versus tradition is a reoccurring theme in the Zelda series. Innovations like the motion controls and Skyward Sword, which we can all agree on were the most annoying things on this planet, or the open world of Breath of the Wild have been polarizing. Some fans crave new experiences and welcome these new changes, while others prefer the tried and true formulas that define their earlier gaming experiences. However, fans' expectation and nostalgia play huge roles in all of these games. For many, the Zelda series is tied in their childhood memories, and changes to the formula can feel like a betrayal or what made them fall in love with the series in the first place. Newer fans who enjoy a more diverse of game experience might be more open to the world series of evolution, but that takes a chance of only focusing on one group of audience and not all of them. It had a different tone even from the first game, and yet it needed to fit within what we set up with the first game. Uh, and that's again one of those things where you don't... You lie! There will be- oh! Okay, so that was Last of Us 2. Ellie got her revenge. Please, Ellie, again, please. Please. That's why I bought this game, because I thought I'd just be able to play as Ellie the whole fucking time. Why are you helping us? Because it's forced. Why are we watching her frolic through the fucking forest like Bambi, bro? For- why are you- you won't see Ellie again to the... Like, let's let's build the... Let's have the first game where, like, you build this, like, great connection with Joel. And then let's ruin it by killing him. So the player fucking hates Abby. And then let's try to make the player feel bad for Abby. Because... Because why? What was going through the head of yours when they were writing this? Like, let's just make everyone hate The Last of Us franchise now? The Last of Us 2 is gonna become non-canon, because people hate it so much. 
I'm ready. People I'm cross ready. this regularly? Yeah. You're lying. I'm not. I mean, it's not the most popular. Group. Arms are heavy. <laughs> Mom's spaghetti. Now let's talk about what I call the No Drunkman effect. No Drunkman, the co-president of Naughty Dog and the co-creative mindset behind the Last of Us series, is known for pushing the boundaries of storytelling and gameplay, which often leads to polarized opinions among most fans. In The Last of Us Part 2, Drunkman made a very bold and interesting narrative choice that split the fan base 50-50. Some praised the game for its innovative approach and emotional depth, while others were upset by the departure from their expectations. But seriously, what were they thinking about that storyline in The Last of Us Part 2? How do you make us kill the character that you made us fall in love with and then have us play as the character who killed him? What kind of dumb <clears throat> Yeah, sorry about that. It's just I get really passionate about people making stupid decisions. You know what? Never mind. Moving along. <laughs> This effect is similar to what we see in the Zelda series, where significant changes in gameplay, art style, or narrative direction can create a divide among most fans. However, all is not lost, because the one thing that often unites fans despite their differences is the epic soundtracks that accompany Zelda's dungeons and boss battles, from the eerie tombs of the Forest Temple and the Ocarina of Time, to the haunting melodies of the Arbiter's Grounds and Twilight Princess, and the majestic themes of the Divine Beast in the Breath of the Wild. These soundtracks elevate the gaming experience. Recently, LG Anuma, the producer of the Zelda series, made an interesting statement in an interview with IGN regarding the changes made in Breath of the Wild. He said, we wanted to challenge the conventions of the series to create something that felt fresh and new. We knew that not all fans would embrace these changes, but we felt it was important for the evolution of the series. And it's interesting when I hear people say they prefer the old entries, because I'm wondering why do you want to go back to that type of game where you're more limited or more restricted in the types of things and ways that you play? But I understand that desire that we have for nostalgia, and so I understand it from that aspect. This statement scapulates the risk and reward of innovation. Anuma's vision for a more open exploratory Zelda game has been both celebrated and criticized, reflecting the broader split in the fan base. But unlike No Drunkman, who pretty much told 50% of the original fan base of Last of Us Part 1, We don't care. Let me tell you. Right, let me tell you. <laughs> Anuma is seemingly listening and understanding why his fans still want what we had. The community itself is divided. Forums, social media, and YouTube comments are often battlegrounds for debates of which game is the best or which direction the series should have taken. The diversity of opinions highlights, however, the passion and investment fans have in the series, which I can also say for The Last of Us Part 2. In my opinion, they should keep the open world gameplay because we have all experienced trying to escape the map and explore more and deeper of the world, whether it be Super Mario Sunshine or The Simpsons Hit and Run. We've tried but they should keep it while adding older aspects from the older entries because I think we can all agree on that the dungeons with the puzzles and their amazing soundtracks attached to the bosses were the best part of the games. Like you can't look at me in the eye and say that the Magura, Magura I can't pronounce her name, forgive me, the soundtrack for her boss theme was not the bomb or God, I can't believe I'm saying this, but fire. <laughs> So there you have it, the reasons behind, well, at least my reasons, behind the 50-50 split in the Legend of Zelda fanbase. From gameplay styles and art direction to storytelling and innovation, there are many factors at play. Personally, I think the diversity is what makes the Zelda series so unique and enduring. But what do you think? Are you more of a traditionalist who prefers the classic Zelda games, or do you love the new direction the series is taking? Let me know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe and hit the bell icon for more deep dives into your favorite video games. Thank you for watching.